We're excited to sit down with Professor Larry Speck today. Uh, Professor Speck has been teaching here at the University of Texas at Austin for about 24 years, where he's won numerous teaching awards. And on top of his educational work here, he's also a principal at the architecture firm Page. And his work can be seen all across the state of Texas, from multiple projects here in Austin, including the Austin Bergstrom International Airport, the Austin Convention Center, as well as the New Dell Medical School. Um, but then also across the state of Texas at Discovery Green Park in Houston, and a new skyscraper going up next to Fountain Place in Dallas, just to name a few examples. Uh, Professor Speck recently won the Texas Society of Architects Lifetime Achievement Medal, and we're here to talk to him today about that accomplishment, as well as his advice for students in here, and about his experiences in both his professional practice and his educational career here at the University of Texas. Professor Speck, welcome. Good to see you, Andy. Uh, my first question for you is, um, what does winning this award mean for you? Uh, actually, at the beginning, I was like, okay, well, this, it, you know, it's a little embarrassing. You can get a lot of, you know, attention, and I don't, I'm not crazy about that. But I will tell you, it has been phenomenal. It has been an opportunity to reconnect with a lot of people because they would, you know, contact me and say congratulations, and that was wonderful. And then there was a big event last Friday night. Uh, and I have this very uh, bifurcated life where I've got, you know, UT and all those people I interact with and then Paige and all those people I interact with and then my professional buddies in Texas Society of Architects and then my family and, whoa, for once, they were all in the same room. And that was great, actually, uh, to kind of have them all there and, and celebrate it. So it was good. Yeah, that's awesome. And you, so you mentioned that, like, that bifurcation. How do you see your work um, at Page, you know, influencing your work as a professor here, and and, and vice versa? I, I, you know, you have this, I think, really interesting position where you're both teaching students here, but also, you know, running a very successful and very influential practice. Like, how do those two things come together? For you? So, I, I know for other people it works doing one or the other, uh, but for me, I can't imagine teaching without practicing. It's mm -hmm. so. Uh, enlightening and so keeps me so connected to the profession and the discipline to be practicing and I feel like I can really bring that back to my teaching and uh, let students get a window into you know what is it like today right this minute practicing yeah. in architecture uh, so that's fantastic I think it's a big asset to my teaching uh, likewise I think the teaching always gives me ideas and inspiration that I would have a hard time getting, just me personally, if I just was a practitioner. Uh, so the two are super complementary, and they reinforce each other, and I think I'm a better teacher because I practice, and I'm a better practitioner because I teach. All right, and another question I have for you is, um, you know, thinking about your own work, you've done tons of projects across Texas, or even another, you know, firm or uh, architect. What do you think is a project that really stands out to you as advancing Texas architecture? Um, well, you know, I think of, of the stuff we've done. Um, I'm, I'm really proud at the moment of the Dell Medical School, mm -hmm. the project we did there. Um, you know, the campus is super precious to me. I think it's a really iconic Texas thing. Uh, uses regional materials and very climate responsive and topography and uh, landscape responsive. I, I, I love the campus. Mm -hmm. And so this was an opportunity. We had done the design guidelines for the master plan and tried to embed in some of those this, what is it like to do something here and make a place here? Uh, and then here was an opportunity to really try to, try to do that. And uh, I think the medical school ended up being a nice combination of both very much about locality and where it is and being a part of the campus and the region. But at the same time, you know, their, their motto was rethink everything. They're a progressive place. They're not meant to be in the past. So uh, that, that was, that's really where I like to see Texas going is, yeah, looking back, but also really looking to the future. Very cool. Um, my next question for you is, do you have any favorite, like maybe it's through your practice or maybe here at school, any favorite stories or milestones from either your professional career or teaching practice? So, 
you know, um, this is an old story. Mm -hmm. So years and years ago, when I was a little baby architecture faculty member, uh, there was a symposium at UT uh, organized by somebody else mm -hmm. on what is Texas architecture. And uh, there were three major speakers in it. Uh, O'Neill Ford, who was an icon uh, of Texas architecture, who was uh, an older guy at the point. And Howard Barnstone, who was another icon of Texas architecture, but a real modernist, not a regionalist, a modernist. Uh, and then they needed to have to balance all that old gray hair. They had me as the, the kind of young pup. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, gosh, it was an amazing experience that I've replayed in my head hundreds and hundreds of times. Uh, but that, that moment crystallized for me significantly uh, what I thought about being an architect in Texas. And maybe the takeaway from that story is uh, it was wonderful to be able to have that conversation with someone like O'Neill Ford, who had the depth of life experience and, and talent that he had, and also to have it with Howard Barnstone. But both of them, very different, very different ideas about architecture. And, uh, you know, that's what, that's what this profession is about, is just having those great conversations about what it is we do and what do I believe and what do I think and what's my right path. And that moment was really important for me. And that really ties in well with like the, your you know, emphasis on theory. And right, yeah. right. I'm, and I might have been, I don't know, 28 years old okay. then. It was a long time ago, uh, but had a big impact. Um, how about, uh, what do you think is the single, like, okay, so, you know, you, you taught for, for a while here. And you think about going back when you were in school, right? Uh-huh. Um, what was, this, if you could go back and give yourself advice or think about advice you would give to students now, uh -huh. what's a single piece of advice you would give to uh -huh. someone who is in school or thinking about going to school and uh -huh. to become an architect? So that actually, uh, that rings a bell big time. Okay, good. Because um, I give this piece of advice mm -hmm. a fair amount. And it's an unconventional piece of advice. Okay. Uh, but, uh, you know, I used to teach studio a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, and I enjoyed that. And I think studio's great. But as I look back on my own education, uh, I think what helped me become a good designer was not studio. Mm -hmm. In studio, it's sort of all about do, 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 do. Uh, and I took amazing history and theory classes mm -hmm. that were all about think, 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 think. Mm -hmm. And that really challenged me to figure out what I thought about architecture, what I believed in. And uh, those classes were so meaningful mm -hmm. to me. And those faculty members were so meaningful. So for the last, I don't know, 20 years, that's really what I've concentrated on teaching. Mm -hmm. And I love teaching that. But I have a hard time convincing the students, this is a high priority for you. Uh, you need to really pay attention, not just to studio. The studio's great, but it's not the be all end all. And you need to be working on your head and your thinking and your um, beliefs beyond just doing. Uh, and uh, my advice would be uh, keep studio in perspective and absolutely don't go do crazy hours, be sane. Um, and so you kind of touched on this just now, but my last question for you today is what do you, what do you want your legacy at the University of Texas to be? And if you think about as an educator um, or even as like a practicing architect, what do you see as, as your legacy? So God, legacy is a yeah. big word. Uh, you know, I'm not sure I'm thinking about legacy, but what I like to think that I've contributed mm -hmm. is thousands and thousands of students who just got their eyes opened. Just, whoa, I never knew architecture could have that depth or have that importance or be that interesting. Uh, and that's my job is just to open people's eyes. And it's not just architecture students, but the great unwashed, all those people who know nothing about architecture and but are smart and live in a world full of architecture. and deal with it every day of their life, but don't have a clue about it. 
And that's what I really want to accomplish, is just opening people's eyes. Uh, and that's architecture students and architects and potential clients and users and patrons and whatever, but just to help people see this field deeper and, uh, and understand its incredible consequence on people's lives. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for uh, sure. us today. Cool.